Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to look at linking up our shapes for the arpeggios. As I, I always teach the arpeggios in three positions, okay? So for each arpeggio, you've got three positions. You've got your first finger position, starts on your first finger. So if we were in C major, actually let's do this in G major just for a change, okay? So G major, first position. That's a one octave arpeggio starting on your first finger. Then you've got your second finger position, starting on your second finger. Okay, that's the second finger position. And then your fourth finger position starts on your fourth finger, you would think, eh? Um, but what we do to get longer arpeggios, because sometimes you might be playing a solo or a groove, you know, and you want to go up and down the fingerboard and things like that. Then also when you're playing, you want to be able to, you want to have the facility if you want to, to go up the neck. So if you're... You know, how am I putting all this together? Um, and I'm putting it together by linking the the arpeggios that I've shown you over the, the past few lessons by linking your um, one octave patterns. And what I thought would be cool, and that, that's why I should say, I get asked a lot, you know, what patterns do you use for um, like a two octave G major arpeggio? And the truth is I use a zillion different patterns because there isn't just one pattern. I use all of the, the three finger, the, the three um, patterns that I've shown you, okay, I just link them up to create a zillion different patterns. So for it now, I'm going to show you, um, I'll, I'll show you three different two octave arpeggio, um, G major seven arpeggios, okay? I'll show you three different ones and I'll talk about how I'm linking the, the shapes to create them. But just before I do that, just as a, a demonstration, for instance, I could play a two octave G major like this. And then I could go down completely differently. Okay, or I could play it like this. Or like this. You know, and these are fingerings I've really memorized. I can just see the patterns so I can link up or see the fingerings, them one octave fingering patterns that we've we've been learning over the last few lessons. So just to show you how this works in practice, okay? Um, let's look at the G major seven, and we're gonna start off, let's say, with the second finger position, okay? So we're gonna play a one octave G major seven arpeggio, okay? So. Now when we get to here, I want to carry the arpeggio on. So let's take, so we get to that G there, let's take, let's take, let's borrow from the same pattern that we were using before, okay? So we've got G, B, D, F sharp, G. But when we get to that G, let's put our second finger on that and then start that same pattern again. That second finger, first finger, fourth finger is just borrowed from here, so. So I've gone finger two, one, four, three, and then second finger, first finger, uh, fourth finger, uh, first finger, fourth finger, and that leaves us on the fifth. Now obviously we want to go right up to the second octave, so we're gonna play up here. Now notice how I do that with my third and fourth finger. I'm doing it with my third and fourth finger of this hand because I'm borrowing or not borrowing, I'm viewing the, arpe the G major 7 arpeggio shape there from my second finger position, starting on the second finger. So as I go up, I automatically play with my third and fourth because I know if I come back down, I 
can use that fingering if I need to. Okay, so again, let's look at that fingering. So I think somebody's building a building a wall next door by <laughs> all the clanking. Um, so let's go up the G major again to the third finger, then shift on to the second finger. So you you start in that same position again, second finger position, and then. how I mix and match the patterns to create the longer runs. Now for argument's sake, let's go down exactly the way we came up. Now, I'm using, and, and the workbook will be notated with my fingering for this. You know, a lot of the time, my fingering, it's very efficient, but it, it's not, you know, it's not really cemented down when I'm playing something like that. A lot of the time, a lot of the time there, for instance, I'd slide that F sharp with my third finger to the G and then go in with my first finger like this. You know, you, you can break little rules like that. So that's um, a two octave G major seven arpeggio, and that really was exclusively using the second finger position. We were just mixing using that. We play it started off with the second finger position, then we moved again to that second finger position there, and then again we moved to that second finger position here. Because there it is there. Remember when you're playing all this, be make sure that you're visualizing this while you're playing it. And to, to take this even further, get the track on as well and play these longer arpeggio lines with the track. So the sound of the arpeggio and how that exists within a harmonic, you know, with a harmonic background to it, um, you know, just it'll get it in your ear a lot, a lot better than just playing these up and down. Although playing them up and down does have its, it does have its, um, its, its, it's moments, you know, you should do that as well. So that was the second finger position. Now let's start with the uh, first position. Okay, so this is the first finger position, starting on the one, um, the first finger, should I say. We've got G, major third, fifth, flat, um, dom have dominant seven, um, natural seven, and then we land on the G. So here, as we get to this G, we've got two choices. I could play this arpeggio, and I could, and then I could carry on the arpeggio by using this finger in G. So second finger, first and fourth, and again there I'm borrowing from the second finger position. This one, the one that we just did. I could do that, or I could do that. I could use the first finger position twice. So we go finger one, three, five. These are intervals, by the way. Uh, interval to root, third, fifth, seven, and then slide up with that first finger to the G, and then that pattern starts again. But there we've run out of strings. If we had a sixth string, we could keep on going. But we've, you know, we've run out. So what we're going to do, we're going to, and then again, I'm using third and fourth finger here, it borrows from this second finger position here of the G major. So let's look at that one. First finger position, sliding back into first finger position, and then finishing off in second finger position there. And again, we could go down the same way we came up. Again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the fingerings, you can mess around with them. If I was playing this on the job, you know, in action, I'd probably play that with my fourth finger, that last um, F sharp there, and slide into the G. But 
again, I'm just using the first finger positions there. First finger position, first finger position, fourth third finger, and then landing on the G. And then you can go back down the same way you came. Or if you're really getting into this and you start seeing your positions, you can go down a completely different way. And we'll do that in one minute. Okay, so the next one that I want to look at is let's start off with the first position. Yeah. 